Imagine a country where 75% are youth. 280,000 students are churned out of our tertiary institutions every year, and only 6% are absorbed by government. Where do the rest go? Obviously, the private sector is where they go. Therefore, the private sector has become the engine of growth. My name is Senaya, Tony Senaya, Chief Executive Officer of Horseman Shoes, a local footwear manufacturing company. Welcome to Tony Senaya's take on entrepreneurship. We will go for a short commercial break. When we come back, I will introduce to you my other guests to have this conversation. Thank you for staying and welcome back to Tony Senaya's take on entrepreneurship. To have this conversation with me is a colleague and friend from the creative industry, Mabel Simpson of M Sims, and of course my mentor, Mr. Albert Osai of Coco Ken. Welcome, Albert and Mabel. Thank, Thank you. you. Mabel, good to see you again. How is business doing? We are surviving. And um, tell us, what does M Sims do? M Sims is a creative enterprise that I set up in 2010 to produce handmade accessories. So basically we make handmade handbags, we make loafers, we make slippers, iPad cases, any accessory that you can think about. The only thing that we are not doing now is clothing. What, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you anticipate doing clothing in the future? You never can tell. So you never say never? Yes. As an entrepreneur, you always have to look out for opportunities, right? You're always dreaming. Well, um, Coco King, I'm sure a lot of people have seen them all around the capital. Albert, what, what is Coco King about? Well, we, we supply ready-made meals mm -hmm. to the general public. Okay. And uh, we do that uh, for, uh, f by focusing on the convenience, uh, the quality, the standard, uh, the affordability and accessibility. That's what we, we mainly... We affordability mainly. and accessibility. Yeah. So how long have we been doing this? Uh, we've been here for... This is our seventh year. Seventh year? Yes. Really? Yeah. But uh, it looks like Coco King just shot into the public limelight not long ago. Yeah, well, I suppose that's what happens when uh, you've been hiding and uh, struggling for a long time. Wow. Uh, and then suddenly people think that you just came from the... Um, from nowhere. From nowhere and then everything just started. sort of started. Thank you very much for joining me on my take on entrepreneurship. Thank you. People have always said that we don't have employment and you know, a majority of the young people are not employed. 75% of the Ghanaian public are youth. And these are the guys who have formed the Unemployed Association of, maybe what is it? <laughs> Unemployed Graduate Association or something like yes, that. Yes, I mean, as the statistics shows, 75% of the Ghanaian public are youth. And majority of them, in fact, woefully, woefully majority of them are unemployed. What are the threats to the economy? When you look around, when you look at the places where we have um, militants, uh, terrorists, when you look at these, the core members of those groups are young people. Do we have that threat in Ghana? In a situation where 75% are youth and majority about 70% are unemployed? Well, um, I think it's a broad question that you're asking now. But uh, um, I think the, the, the unemployment situation in Ghana is a time bomb. Um, and it's a time bomb because government, uh, I think the focus is right. They are trying to help. They, everybody's talking about buy made in Ghana, uh, grow made in Ghana companies. But the, but the approach, uh, I think it's, it's, it's not structured enough. Okay. Now, if you look at the, the Asian countries, what they did was they actually took some companies, a few companies, about, um, about 10, 15 companies, and they focused on them in terms of assistance mm. and capital. And then grew them high enough to be able to employ people. Because you need to scale the companies to be able to absorb uh, the graduates and the unemployed betrays. And that push is not there. Mm. I'm sure with, your, uh, with yourself, uh, you've experienced it. If you had the, 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 the help to scale, mm -hmm. where you can employ maybe um, a, a thousand, yeah. a thousand people manufacturing shoes in this country, but that, that, that is the vision of Horseman Well, that, that, exactly. So then you can see that you, will, you would absorb a lot of people coming in. But the push, the, 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 the assistance to do that, 
is non-existent. Um, talking about government support, don't you think that we live in a country where um, businesses are afraid to be associated with poli the pol like political parties? Like our, our environment is so vindictive. So if this government pushes you, the next party comes and you they, they tag you, you are a member of party. I mean, we have had instances where previous business, businesses belonging to members perceived to be part of a particular government are brought down. I'm, I'm not talking about uh, party support. Okay. I'm thinking. I'm talking about government support. It, it has to be an institution. There has to be. There, it has to be. It can even be an institution outside the government. Okay. But it has to be. I think we have institutions like that in this country already. Uh, these things are already there. I think it's more to do with um, uh, the focus. focus. What What do we need? What What's the plan? You know, we have these companies. What do we do? Do we get them on board, or do we just invest in some machinery for them? Or normally, it's machinery yeah. and space. Yeah. I mean, if you, I'm sure if you, if you talk to Mabel, it's, it's the same thing. Machinery and space. Machinery, space, assistance, maybe cash flow to, 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 to go through. It's, it's not physical money but per se that we need. You know, it's just that we need, just the, the environment needs to be conducive for us to be able to because I'm sure if you talk to Mabel, Mabel can employ 500 people um, if she has the, the machinery, the space, how many people and the are assistance. How many people is Coco can employ now? Uh, the full-time staff is about 60. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. And then the, the casual staff is over 100. Mm -hmm. um, but what I'm saying is we can employ 500 people if. easily. But then you need the assistance, you need the machinery, you need the, um, space. the space, you need the... The environment needs to be there, um, and that's not available. We have to do it ourselves. We have to find the space ourselves. We have to source the machinery ourselves. We have to find out, and all these assistants. Sometimes we are not. Tech, um, for me, I, I don't. I have. I've had to actually had to learn what sort of machinery I need. I don't need to do that, yes. really. I really don't care what machinery be. All I'm, I care about is. All you have to be to be I want to feed. Machinery. I want to feed fifty thousand people a day. How do you do? That's it. it. So you sell the idea to somebody, somebody comes mm. out with the... I want to feed 50,000 people a day. The rest of the issue and the background and all those work, I shouldn't be bothered and bogged down with every day trying to find this and how do I do this, trying to... I, I, it's, it's, it's not necessary. I so I think if we can get that and assistance... Living, take, and living environment. And, and, and I, it, uh, maybe we can do it ourselves. Uh, maybe we don't need the government. I mean, you can argue that as well. And <laughs> maybe we can do it ourselves. Maybe well, find... Uh, yes. I think that there have been successful businesses that that didn't necessarily have to fall on government, but um, it's, it's a bit difficult. But see, we cannot also discount the influence that the role government must play, you know. So to a large extent, I will agree with you that, yes, we need government support. But on the other side, we can also do it on our own tell. That I always call government support as a windfall. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes, bingo. If it doesn't come, then we, we, we forge on. Maybe, I mean, you are young. I mean, you're young because I know you personally. <laughs> um, can we say that there are lack of opportunities within the system that is making a lot of people um, staying unemployed, thereby looking for the white collar job? I mean, what worked for you? You didn't. You, I, you, I know worked briefly, and then you jumped out to start your own business. Do we lack the opportunities in Ghana here? For me, I don't think that it's about the opportunities. I think. Um, one, our educational system is to mm. blame part of it. Um, our educational system doesn't allow us to be critical thinkers. I think it's to stereotype, do this, do that, do that. Whatever the lecturer has given you, that's what you have to produce for them. You know, so even if you try to understand whatever they are teaching and bring in your own knowledge after your research, you are failed. And also, um, it's the culture. The culture is, okay, you go to school, and then after university, you do your national service, and... The next thing is for you to take your CV, um, you know, to companies to look for a job. So, I mean, if no company is going to call you, then you are sitting at home waiting with your legs crossed. And for me, I believe that um, the opportunities, each and every one of us has um, a talent. We all have more than one talent in us. We need to look inside us and then find or ask ourselves what we are passionate about. What can we do? What can we um, you know, do and not get bored easily with, and we can grow a business out of it. Well, talking about education, I know you did visual arts at um, Wesley Girls. Yes, did, the um, best school in Ghana. Well, 
I don't know about that. Then, then you went to University of Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology yes. to read graphic communication. Communication design. Communication design. So in effect, you are in your field of what you studied. Yes, um, and it's quite surprising that after school, I, um, where I worked, it had nothing to do with design. I worked with a media company and then a marketing communications company before I branched to do design. So, you see, um, it's also the perception about, you know, um, studying visual arts or the perception about the creative industry in Ghana. Um, a lot of times there are people who are very great artists, you know, people can paint, people can, you know, make things with their hands. But we've made it in such a way that if you go to school to study visual arts, that means that you didn't perform well at school. You know, so um, from the start, students who are good, you know, with their creative skills, don't even want to study visual arts. Well, they are, the sciences, exactly. Business, if you study that. science, that means you are brilliant. So even if the student is not brilliant and, you know, they have one or two connections in the school, they are pushed to do science and they come out and they fail. Okay. In effect, we are saying that one, our educational system doesn't help us think outside the box because when you come out of the university, you think that the world owes you something. Exactly. You know, starting my business four years ago, I, I was selling from door to door, office to office. And considering my background, um, I, I was very active in student po politics, so they thought that I had all the network to, to, to launch myself a very big job. When they meet me on the streets and they ask me, oh, I mean, what do you do? I make, I make and sell shoes. They look on their face. Yeah, shoemaker. Look, look to say, are you serious? You know, people will look down for me because I had a very big, big backpack. But the young people of today don't want to sacrifice. So I believe that if we want to take this issue of entrepreneurship serious, we have to look at our curricula again. We have to challenge our people to think differently. Mr. Osei, oh no, let me call you Albert. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Albert, Coco, serving breakfast, I mean, it is so ordinary. It is an opportunity that has existed since creation. I mean, what struck you? Why did you decide to take up that opportunity? It, it, it's not as ordinary as you think, though. It, it is not as ordinary because um, the reason why it's not as ordinary as you think is because you are looking at the product. Okay. We are looking at the brand. Okay. So it's, if it was just a product, believe you me, it would have been so easy. It would, it would be easy. You wouldn't have to worry about a lot of things. You wouldn't have to worry about your communication. You wouldn't have to worry about... Um, actually, it would be very cheap to do. It would, anybody can just get up and do it. Um, but it's not, the, it's not the product. Because the product itself is, is the least of our issues. The most important thing is the, is, is the service. Is it, can I say the business, running the business it's, it's, it's the service. What are you doing? Why are we doing what we're doing? That's the question that we all... I mean, every entrepreneur, um, I think before you even start, yes. think, of, think of this. Why? why are you doing what you want to do? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm and that, once you can answer that, then you are, you, are, you are okay. So why are we doing what we are doing? We are doing what we are doing because we want to uh, provide an excellent product with the right service with an, and the right standard and the right quality in order to ensure that our customers enjoy what, what they're actually having from us. So it's a whole lifestyle. Okay. Basically. So it is not the money as many people think. No, 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 no. They want to start entrepreneurship, they want to start business, they are looking at their bank account. Trust me, if it was about the money, I would have stopped it in uh, the first three years. Yes, that's what I always tell the young people. The first mean. three years, if it was about money, everybody would have quit. Mm -hmm. And that includes the people around me. Okay. And that's the second thing I would come to, the people. But let me talk about the, the, the brand. The brand is, uh, uh, the, the brand of cooking, really, it's, it, it means something that is affordable, of high standard, convenience, accessible, and it's timely. That means that we don't waste your time. Okay. This, this is the brand. All right, so what I get is in venturing to any venture, it must be a problem solving. It has to, why are you doing it? Yes, so you, you have to solve a yeah. problem. Yeah, you are doing it because you want to provide a service. 
and the service is that you want to be able to deliver high quality uh, products at a specific time you know we have to be there on time every time we have to provide a standard consistent quality product we have to be accessible we have to be affordable yeah. and that's th and that's the brand so the product uh, cocoa the, the cocoa itself as the product is a means okay. to that to get to that brand so breakfast yes we also do lunch yes. a lot of people don't know don't yes. know that I didn't know myself. yes we do lunch but we don't do it because we don't do it visibly okay. people don't think about that so, um, but so it's food ready-made meals really as the research suggests and um, by media network they said they, they research about young people running business in Ghana and only 14% of graduates said they were able that is what they said that they were able if they if they, they are indeed able we don't know but you five years is no joke and research also suggests that a lot of startup die within one to three years so if you have crossed that threshold how did you do it hmm. I think first and foremost it's it's about faith and then um, once you set out to be an entrepreneur you need to tell yourself that you're going to make mistakes and when you make the mistakes are you going to stop no you learn from them so yes i mean in the first years we are still making mistakes though you can never stop making the mistakes but you learn from them and then also you try and build right the right network fortunately i met you a few years back we've shared ideas before we learn i met mr say some time back i learned from him you learn from people who've been in in the industry whether they've been in for years or for a short period but you pick one or two things from them and then also you do research about your field that's why there's the internet google is free you know you need to go on you need to you know attend training programs for entrepreneurs for business management whatever fortunately we took part in um joy fmi in business 2010 so 2011 exactly 2011 why i had uh, mrs pelly samenta the deputy managing director of ut bank as my mentor so i mean she brought on board um a bit of financial management i remember sitting in some training sessions where you have all the ut managers there so young entrepreneur yeah in a training session with you know managers of ut bank that was really helpful we took part in enablers ut enablers business launch pad program where you know you are taught how to put together a business plan i remember a few weeks back i gave my business plan to someone to look at it and he asked me that how much did i pay for it and i said i did that myself so you see, you need to look around you and then um figure out which competitions or which um seminars or training programs you need to attend to build yourself up to be honest with you i'm a creative person i'm now learning to be a business person and it's tough yeah, it's you know it's it's very it gives you sleepless night because you need managing to make sure managing the finances and that's one thing that a lot of young people are not able to do mm -hmm. separating their um business finances from their personal finances uh, maybe i'll tell you that i think for the first few years i'm sure albert even did it you know it is bound to happen that you mix yeah, up tempted. Yes, not that you, it, it is bound to happen. <laughs> you mix up your personal finances and all that. But as you said, you need the mentorship, which is very key. You need to read a lot and take advantage of all those training opportunities. And um, I must also say that I went through my business 2010. So I'm a senior. I went through um, <laughs> an, an nebulous 2010-2011. So you're my senior. There too. And um, I have also read a lot. I have also listened to the stories of how other people did it. So you don't necessarily have to sit in an MBA class, you know, there no. are learning opportunities all around. And you need to start small and then grow it. Exactly. And make sure you that make whatever mistakes you correct them. Whatever yeah. you are getting you reinvest back into the business. But young people would make a little profit and the next thing they are thinking about is riding a Mercedes. <laughs> My dream car is a Jaguar, but I'll get there someday. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for staying. We will go for a short commercial break. You are still tuning to Tony Sanestic on entrepreneurship. Thank you for staying and welcome back to Tony Senaya's Take on Entrepreneurship. My name is Senaya, Tony Senaya, CEO, CEO of Hoffman Shoes, a, a local footwear manufacturing company in Ghana. And I'm having this conversation with my, my colleague in the creative industry, Mabel Simpson of M. Sims, almost a household name now into fashion accessories. And of course, Albert Osei, the man we see as our mentor, Coco King, serving breakfast all over the country. Um, Albert, before we went, we agreed that indeed there are opportunities, even though they will not come jumping at us, you know, 
plain in plain clothes so if one identifies an opportunity if one has the idea how do you go about it i believe starting is difficult but i mean seven years and i'm sure you had some corporate experience before we started um Kuku Ken. how do the young people go about the ideas how, where did they start from well i think the the starting point mabel mentioned it uh, earlier um you have to want to do it and wanting to do it is is where the passion comes from mm. uh because if you don't want to do it if it's not a, if there's no nothing there that is driving you to do it then don't even start just don't bother the reason being you would start and you would stop you would we didn't you, would, you wouldn't last more than a year uh, and because your 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 reason for starting is not right so let's say you find you see an opportunity it's like oh oh this is like you know i can make money from here quickly and don't bother it's not it, because if you go there and the money doesn't come quickly so you'll be thinking be no no the drive definitely is not money the drive is wanting to do something about what you've seen mm -hmm. uh, so yeah so where's, that's where the passion comes from so maybe you've seen something that is not right i mean i'm sure people like zoom lion and all these people they see something that is not right so they think to themselves what can i do to change it you saw something that wasn't right i mean why are we uh, buying foreign shoes um and when we can make them locally um, my, my worry was even the second hand the second hand, the second -hand shoes, shoes. i thought that as a people we have come of age to get yeah. something new for our souls exactly you know having bought um, yeah second hand shoes from Kantaman to during my yeah. schooling days yeah um after school do I still have to go to Kantaman to, to buy second hand yeah. shoes from UK and Italy yeah. or fall on the cheap imported stuff from Asia? So, like, so not to cut you short here, but then so it's, it's your, that's what drove you. Yes. So there has to be something. Wow. Not something, something has, I'm sure Mabel to has something that said to her, no, listen, I can do this. Let me do, let me do this. If you don't have that, don't start. Because you are, going, you are wasting money. You are just going to throw the money down, um, down the drain. That's, don't bother. Um, but if when you get it and you have it, you think to yourself, no, this one, I think I can do something about it. You don't need any background training mm -hmm. on it. Okay. All you need is the fact that you are determined to change it. That's all you need. Mm -hmm. The rest will come, will, will come in place. And then as we talked about earlier, you start as small as you can. As small as you can, honestly. Um, uh, when I say as small as you can, I'm just saying that that is where the, the, the people call it prototypes. You prototype or you try it, or, but do that. You need to do that. You have to, you, you have to test it. So testing, prototype, trying, whatever it is, Let, try it out. We did, it, we did that for about, I think it was about eight months in 2007. Okay. We did it about for eight months. So you, we tried. 2007, Mabel and I were still in school. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So we tried it. We, we went to an, an office. We, we opened the car boots. We started to sell it to people. The, uh, um, the workers coming into the office. Uh, they buy it. Oh, oh, what's this? Interesting. I like it. Oh, 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 my friend will like it. Go here. Oh, go here. Go there. Oh, try this place. So you prototype it. And when, if you prototype it and it works, that's it. Well, um, people also say that, yes, I have the idea. Money. Maybe I'm I know your story. I know maybe I'm saying this big and out there, but we need to pray. <laughs> Is it, how, how have you managed? I know you don't have the money. So those who say we, we lack financing, we lack the capital, how have you done it? How did we do it or how are we doing it? It's how are we doing it? You know. <laughs> well, um, you know the story, but then other people out there don't know the story. I, when, when I actually resigned from my job, I think I'd saved just about 200 Ghana cities. And it's not always about the money. I always tell people that I, my first job was paying me 400 Ghana cities back then. I moved to a job that was paying me 150 Ghana cities. Then I moved to another job that was paying me 350 Ghana cities. And when I wanted to start MSIMS, I had just saved 200 Ghana cities. But I told myself that, you know what? At that point, I felt that, okay, you know what? I had so many ideas written in my blue book that, you know, I used to keep. And I asked myself, what am I going to start if I don't start now? I, um, 
at that period, I was working with one of my mentors, someone that had shared ideas with someone who had even helped pick the name M. Sims. I, I picked the name M. Sims when I was in school because I've always dreamt or had the dream that I wanted to run my own business someday. What I was going you to do... You had a passion way back in school. What I was going to do, I had no idea. Fashion... It was, I used to be a tomboy. I mean, I like my trousers, you know, my jeans. So, eventually to fashion. So, uh, my boss was um, Kojo Ponkrumah, who, um, you know, had shared ideas with him. He always said that start something. I remember my first resignation letter. He just crumpled it and threw it in the dustbin and said, no, I won't let you go. The following month, he couldn't refuse. So, I... I I resigned from my job and I started um, for my dad's porch, you know, what we call the veranda. That's where I started with one sewing machine, you know. Um, back in the days when our grandmothers were going to marry, they would, you know, they would, in the past, as part of their list, you had to give them a sewing machine. So that's what I bought from her because she wasn't using it anymore. So that machine was about 53 years then and I still use it and it's the best machine that we have, very strong. So for my parents' porch, I bought a few raw materials started making belts and brooches and one bag so the profits that i get i put it back in the business so i started with myself and one other person and you know gradually we've grown the business so every profit that i make goes back into the business so it's, it's about reinvesting and that's what a lot of people can't do and building your client base you know yeah. the first period i remember um, when I started, I would make the item and go deliver myself. And I remember a client saying to me that, why, is it not costly? Then she said to me that, you know what, it's good because you get to meet your clients. You're also building that client's base and making, making sure that they have that trust. They have that faith in you. So client or customer relations is also something very important. It's key because without a client, you can't survive. One very good example I follow is uh, I follow a company like UT Bank. Mm -hmm. Um, and I see UT Bank where it was and where it's, it's been now, and I see that listen, this is what you really need to to uh, to make it happen. We will go for that. Um, we are I'm hundred percent for investment, okay. uh, but then it has to be the right one. Um, it's not about the money. I look at it as what are you when you come? What value are you going to add in terms of the fact that okay, so now maybe. Let me give an example. If a company is a $5 million company and it wants invest and some investors to come in, so what are you bringing? I mean, when you come, are we still going to be, uh, be at the $5 million or are we going to move to $10 million or $50 million? So, so do you, there has to be a re, a, some sort of effect that you are bringing. Okay. There's something. You are bringing something that would make us move to the next stage. Otherwise, it's not, it's not relevant. Well, um, talking about not having enough success story, I think that it also has to do with the fact that most Ghanaian companies don't have the requisite structures, yes. you know, to attract the needed investment, you know. And um, Horseman Shoes has been an example. And after all these publicities, I had a lot of people working, but when they, when they came, the structures were not there. And I relate to a lot of young businesses. Yeah. The name is so big out there. But, but they, have, they, they don't have, I mean, we have, we have been lucky. From the beginning, we, we, we did, we've done very well. I, I mean, um, we saw it coming. Yeah. I, I, you see, from the plan from the word go was that in, within 10 years, we would go. Okay. We, know, we knew that. We were looking at the stock market within 10 years. That was wow. the vision. Wow. You see. Wow. So for me, I, I have been ready from day one. Okay. So, so it's, I, not, it's I, not a matter it, of... Has it anything to to do with your background, you know, having worked in the maybe. so you came yeah. in that experience. Yeah, maybe, for maybe that, I, yeah. <laughs> you know, we are just on the go. Uh, yeah. So we don't have that, that sort of yes. mentality. Yeah. So they come to us as we go along. Yeah. But most people also will be rejected because they have the idea that if somebody comes into your business or a Jew business, you know, that sense of individualism. But then, listen, for your business to survive two generations, I was going to come to that. To your, for your business to survive two generations, that, that, that means in your lifetime and in your children's lifetime, it has to come out of your hand. Exactly. There's no two ways about it. Maybe like I mean, the, you, you don't have any yeah. choice. Unless, of course, you want to uh, die with the business. Yeah. Then, then, and, and if you do that, you're being selfish. 
I sat, because I, you have I grown. Sat, I sat in a business class where we were asked to mention at least five Ghanaian businesses that that have outlived the first generation of founders, and we couldn't get any. Yeah. So okay. then, what is the point of working seven years, ten years, drafting, going down on your knees, doing all these things? <laughs> Who to die it? and leave the company and the company to die. I mean, what's the point? Then, then why? What, then you might as well just go and find some small shop to open and sit up, sit there. <laughs> and then when they come and buy the goods, they, you get your money, your cash, then you chop and then. So, <laughs> Olivia, as, as a small company, as, small, as, as horseman shoes, uh -huh. are you are you ready to open up for people to come in? Do you have that vision that fifty years, hundred years, when maybe something is no more, MSMs will still be? A living entity, a going concern. Yes, that's, I mean, we have that vision, and that's why we are looking at our structures. Now, I mean, that's the next big thing that we are looking at our structures. Because at the end of the day, MSMS is just not going to be known in Ghana, it's going to be a worldwide brand. And also, I think that a lot of people are scared of partnerships because of trust. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and most people also think that, you know, it's money that runs a business. Money. Um, Albert has already made that point. My, yes, you need the money, but you know you can give someone so much money, and if they don't know how to manage that money, it's going to be a cost 90 job. So apart from the money, you need management skills. Now, whoever is bringing you the money, or whoever is going to invest in the company, are they going to help you manage the business? That's another point that you also need to look at. That's another point that investors or partners need to pay. A lot of people think, that, okay, give me, you know, let's say 20 percent there's the money Maybe so they, they said back they and somewhere and exactly every, quarter, every year they are looking for their their dividend exactly they don't understand how the business is running exactly you know? so if you make profits they don't hear that language yeah. all they want is their dividends exactly so business management is also something that we need to take serious so then it it it, it behoves on the entrepreneurs to look out for what they are looking for i mean yeah. to know what yes. they are looking yeah. for I mean, let's take, um, not to go back, but let's take, because I'm a creative person, let's take the late Kofi Anta, you know, who put fashion on that market. I mean, after he passed on, we all asking ourselves, what's next for the brand he built? So, you know, something happens and then you need to pinch yourself and tell yourself that you're also in that, so what's next? All right, so it is not just about making the profit, but building sustainable Business. Exactly, the sustainability. Build it. So, so therefore, we will need the structures. So, um, what I, what I have, what, where I found myself now is to, to, to partner with an organization called Servlet, and they, they, they bring, they bring in entrepreneurs or businesses that have the potential of growing, and they help build the structures. And uh, look, Albert, it, it is so. I have realized that it is so important. There are some basic, basic, basic things that yeah. small businesses should do, yeah. but they don't even know. Yeah. All they know is to manufacture yeah. and sell, make profit, and they think they are doing so well. So I think that, well, we have agreed that going forward, young businesses should look for structures. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, think, I think, not to cut you short, it, 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 that has to also start from the... I, 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 I wish that there are certain things that I did from the beginning. Mm -hmm. that did, what you're saying uh, has to start from the, from the word go. There are certain things, we, we did most things, but there are other things that I think from the beginning you need to, and that's what I'm able to talk about, financial management yeah. structures. You've got financial management structures, and then you've got, you need to you've got your human resource, human resource structures, uh, and then you've got your, um, uh, whatever. I mean, you've got different facilities that you have within your organization that you want to make sure that everything um, you know, has a, a, a system that, that you follow. But it will come back to cost. Can we afford a small business? When you're small and you do it small, you <laughs> grow with it. Okay. It's not to do with the cost. I think it's, it to, it's to do with the mindset. mindset. You, you make sure that one very huge thing that we struggle with, and even a company like ours, we have to remind ourselves every time, is documentation. Well, when, when guys like you say this, then we, we, we can take a breather. No, uh, yeah. So, okay. no, even as, even as we, 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 we struggle with. Uh, and it is a core issue. Yeah. Um, documentation uh, for small businesses, I think, is one of the biggest issues that uh, exist at the moment. We do it. But, we, but in the beginning, we struggled with some certain areas. Yeah. Now, we, it, it's, it's something we consciously do. 
Yeah. We have to force ourselves to do it. So you have to document everything, everything from the people, from the customers who come to your door, wow. their, their names, where they live, their contacts, right through to how, where you spent this money, that money, that money, that money, to where you, where you got this money and that. Everything is documented. And, and we, we, you realize how important it is when you've got about two or three investors sitting in front of you and asking you, so, uh, so give me information about this and give me information about that. <laughs> it is something that if you want to grow yeah. into a corporation rather than just a small one-man business, documentation is number one. When you're making the point on documentation, I've been smiling to, I've been smiling all to myself and I saw Mabel shaking his head. <laughs> Indeed, it is a problem with small businesses and when you interact with some of the big businesses, they mention that documentation is a problem. I, I had some young consultants help me do my books and I was sweating all over the place but I didn't have some plenty. I have spent the money all right but getting receipts, writing, but you told me well as a young company I should, I should, I should start now so that it become a habit because when they even do it for big businesses, they, they even struggle putting information together. So documentation is, is, is one, one big area that a lot of us, including maybe Sensei and I, we, <laughs> we, we, we fall short. You are still tuning into Tony Senea's take on entrepreneurship and I hope you are enjoying the discussion. At this point, we will take a quick commercial break. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Tony Senea's take on entrepreneurship. My name is Senea, Tony Senea. Chief Executive Officer of Horseman Shoes, a local footwear manufacturing company, and I'm having a very insightful conversation on entrepreneurship with Mabel Simpson of M Sims and Albert Osai of Kukukin. Welcome back, Albert and Mabel. Thank you. Yes, Albert, I want us to discuss um, how, after going through the mail, you know, doing the prototype, getting it right, um, climb back your profits, scaling, scaling up bit by bit you need to get your product out you know if you want to scale up you have to appeal to the mass i didn't know coco king has been in existence since 2007. i only heard about coco king the last three years i mean so broadly marketing how how did you take your product out i think for for us uh, it, it was it was it wasn't uh, an event that happened overnight mm -hmm. um the people people knew about us. Not everybody, but uh, we had we had a core base, um, and to to go to come out, it's there. You've got the pros and the cons. When you come out too quickly and you're not ready, it it's not good. It's it's dangerous. Yeah. But you have to come out in, <coughs> in 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 specifics in in different formats, and you know because your capacity to reserve is very important. So you have to have people, in your case, people ready behind you who are helping you come out. Um, because if you are a small team, uh, you're not that many, you don't have uh, people on the ground, and you come out uh, and things don't go well, you know, you, you, you might just fall. Or people will be asking and you can't supply, then you have a problem. So coming out is good. Advertising is good branding and all endorsements are all good but you you have, you have to be very strategic about it um, you don't come out just for the sake of it I mean it, I like uh, um, Mabel's outfit I'm sure if she starts making a lot of noise in national newspapers and in uh, television newspapers first of all it's going to cost her money a lot of money and secondly after she spent that money can she deliver sustain yeah mm -hmm. can she even deliver that's the that's the the question well, I, I have been there for so yeah long. exactly <laughs> can you deliver so you have to balance these two uh, when you are doing you are, you are coming out so you look at your capacity let's say you've got a capacity for producing five thousand shoes at the moment you are doing two thousand shoes Amen. so you know you've got three thousand shoes capacity left there so then you come out so that you can fill that three thousand in that stage and then after that you think okay let me build capacity again and then come out again so it, it's it, it's a it's a it's a it's a staged affair you don't just so saying five thousand shoes as i receive it in the, in, you want to do five thousand <laughs> pairs of shoes in a month yeah, yeah, yeah. but tangy you know this this would be this topic that we are discussing you'd be the best person to give us an answer mm. how did you feel or how did you take it when the president you know mentioned your name during the state of the nation address 
how would you have felt if <laughs> <laughs> well, confused um, I guess well yes I, I, I didn't see it coming I had met him a, a week before in a meeting at the Pedrasi Lodge where we discussed generally the business environment you know so at the latter part of my submission I just said Mr. President you have to wear horseman shoes it was a small group and everybody laughed then he said okay why not so I supplied the shoes and lo and behold, he wore it. Indeed, that day I was in Parliament, and from where I sat, I couldn't see the shoes he was he was wearing because of the the, the agbada he was wearing. So, um, in the course, he 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 gave Horseman Shoes that massive endorsement, and for me, yes, it was good. But I think that it is an endorsement that went beyond me as a person and as a brand. You were not ready for that. Um, I wouldn't say that, but it went it went a long way to encourage other small manufacturers in Kumasi. Because um, um, a radio station in Kumasi went to town to talk to these local manufacturers. And by the way, Kumasi is, Kumasi is the shoe hub in Ghana here. Mm -hmm. I think because I'm in Kumasi situated a shoe factory there, we have a lot of young people. I don't have the data, but I think after some magazine, shoemaking is the second largest employer of the young people in Kumasi. So this um, journalist asked them how they felt that the president is wearing a locally made shoe. And they were inspired that if the number one citizen of the land is wearing something made here, then I think that they have prospects. So I think it, it went beyond horseman shoes to encourage a lot of young people in the shoemaking industry and, and generally young people in the enterprise, you know, because just to say that no matter where you do, what you do, where you find yourself, just keep it, keep doing your best. Mm -hmm. And look, what the president said that the, sh the shoes were comfortable, they were of quality and that they could be compared to any international brand he meant it, you know, because I'm sure 4,000 people could relate to it, including mm -hmm. Albert. Yeah. And you yourself, maybe. Of course. Well, I mean, know. I've walked into your showroom and picked up a pair of loafers, non female loafers, but <laughs> male loafers. <laughs> uh, male loafers, I know you bought for your uncles and cousins. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, in effect, it, it was good for me, and it put me in a light where I cannot, I cannot do otherwise, but only good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because at a point, our showroom became a tourist destination for people. Yeah. Just ordinary Ghanaians, when they are passing and they see horseman shoes, they walk in and say, ah, I'm passing on here, mm. President Mahama Shoe, you know. You know. So then it has put us in a position where we have to keep doing w w what we do best and has become the benchmark, you know. Mm. So, of course, what John the President did, the biggest endorsement ever. Mm. And I have asked branding expert, marketing expert to put, a, to put a figure to it if they were managing the President. How much would they charge? But it is priceless, mm. you know. But before that, we were using um, other 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 celebrities, you know, our celebrities in Ghana here. So we had Ochami Kwame endorse us, and then we have also used social media a lot. If you have huge following on social media and you come to buy our shoes, if we give you a discount, then you will say that mention us on your Facebook page, mention us on your Twitter page, and if you're a media personality mention us on your show because obviously we cannot afford no. the mainstream advertising yeah. you know so these are some of the things that i even tell young people that social media is a powerful a powerful platform yeah instead of putting there i'm going to buy kinky i'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm hanging out with my boys you know what i'm saying yeah. <laughs> you know use it to promote your businesses yeah. and that is one one area that we have used a lot of, very 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 well and now anybody at all would not want to associate with us on social media yeah I'm wearing horseman shoes and trust me people will see it so um <clears throat> in putting our our shoes out there it was bit by bit underground at a point i was declining interviews because anytime i did interviews demand will shoot up mm. but i didn't have the capacity to meet it that's what i'm saying and yes. in the long run Unkramun is serious yeah horseman shoes you're all over the place by yeah. you know, yeah. so i had to go underground a little bit yeah. so it is not necessarily being out there and advertising if you do something good if it's word of mouth and we have yeah. really tried, tried on word of mouth. I think, I think that's what we did in the yeah. beginning. Uh, word of mouth was the biggest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So focus on the product, the quality, focus on, on your service, how efficient that you want to be. People will when you are, when, when you arrive and you want to do mail, you will know. You know so I, I know MSense has also been using, tell us how you, how you put MSense out there. I know you were, you were featured on BBC and all that. You had the morning show, Joy FM morning show broadcast from your home. <laughs> wow. I think on that day, yeah. Albert was also yeah. on. So yeah. it's, it's, 
it's quite pleasant to have two people who were, uh, you know, featured on the Joy FM sure. morning show. Yeah, sure. For for me, um, to be honest with you, endorsement comes with its good sides and bad sides. Okay. You need to be ready, as both of you have said. You need to be ready for it. When we did the BBC show, I mean, you know, you had I had Aquisi Sapon call me and said, Mego, you know what? We are going to put you on World News and we shot something that was just for about three minutes we did it for two days you know and you have calls and emails coming from all over i remember a lady called me from the uk saying she wanted to do my pr for me and asked myself <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what time am I exactly to because you know you are here and you've belittle yourself in quotes yeah. you know but someone out there has seen you to be like some big company you know we've had a few people walking to our production place and they go like so this is where you do all that and i've always said that you know your location should not be your barrier wherever you are if mm -hmm. you listen to the stories of mark zuckerberg and you know bill gates and all these you know rich people they started from their bedrooms we've used social media a lot you know but even though we are using social media branding is also something that you need to look at we have taken branding very serious so on every emsims product that you buy you realize that there's a name tag emsims and it's something you know it's always about the little details the women go out to buy the Gucci bags and the Louis Vuitton bags and they have the name tags on. How many people in Ghana? We started and gradually people are also putting name tags on their bags. Make sure that, you know, just as you walk into a Gucci shop and you walk out with a branded Gucci bag, you know, carrier bag, you're doing the same. So as you grow and you invest in little things, that will make you stand out. And also you need to be creative about it. Use social media. When we put a picture up on social media, like you said, demand shoots up. So there are times that, you know, when we are low on top, we try to limit, yeah. you know, our social media presence a bit. And it's about also learning about social media. It's, it's a strategy. You know that in Ghana, usually between the hours of, let's say, 6 and 8 a.m., people have not started serious work. So you're going to find a lot of people on social media checking what's going out. Mm -hmm. So that's the point that you need to hit at them with something. We, we recently, I've been seeing Coco Kim sponsored ads. Mm -hmm. I know, right? <laughs> we, 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 I mean, social media is it's very actually, I mean... Uh, it's a full-time um, job on its own. Uh, our, our, our people, especially my, um, my right-hand uh, right guy, uh, Derek, Derek yeah. um, he, he's always on. I'm I'm not to that. Uh, I know. I'm you, just, I, I, I just leave it. Before computer. I I I I, I, I leave it with Derek to 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 yeah, actually and, carry and on. And I've been receiving your. WhatsApp. And he's been uh, he's, he's been doing he's been doing very well with it. I mean he he's very socially savvy in yeah. technic technically so technically. And very, we need to use yeah. the internet as yeah, well. These apart are from that. Cost e efficient but effective ways of. of yeah. yeah. I mean it's 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 something that uh, we saw it earlier. Mm. Um, I, 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 I saw it, you know, I saw it and I thought, let's just push it. And I was fortunate to have, to, to, to have somebody who was passionate about mm -hmm. it. So he, he just, I just left it to him mm -hmm. to just go with it. Because I'm, I know I'm, 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 I, 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 I'll be able to do some, but not all. So I think about three years ago, three, four years ago. Yeah, okay. And it's been, it's been yeah, growing. Um, I've said something about being creative and being innovative. I have noticed a trend where in Ghana, where when people start businesses, and they are they seem to be doing well not before long you see a lot of people jump onto it and doing the same thing coco can we knew were street vendors now i've seen a lot of <laughs> a lot of people come up with a similar idea i mean aren't you worried that um, people are copying you no no mm. no you, you don't have to get worried i think if you if you you get distracted you you would easily we've seen a lot of people come and go okay we've seen i mean uh, for the last three, four years, I think about, about three or four, five different companies come and go. You, you can't get distracted. You, you know what you, you're you doing. About, yeah. People think Coco King is just street selling, selling of breakfast. We supply ready-made meals. Okay. We do it to companies, corporates, events, airlines, oil companies any company off-site catering on-site catering and people don't even know that part of the business mm. when you see coco king outside on the street serve seven with the umbrella there that's that's the brand you're seeing the brand yeah you know the but if you you are coming there because you think oh we are making some money so i'm coming to sit next to him and i'll make some money you've lost the plot 
Yeah. Because it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a corporation we are building. We, we're not building a, um, just a, a one-man business here. It's a, it's a company. It's, it's, it's well, I'm sure, I'm sure uh, Nadia yeah. will learn from that. She will see, because she has come to me crying all the time that people are trying to copy her. No, no, don't, don't, don't. I think no, you have I to just have your, know what you're doing, mm -hmm. your core, and then just follow I it. I think I've gone beyond that point. Yeah. You, you grow. I'm, I'm glad you, you grow know because um, since you've grown, you've not come back to tell me that. So you know, you yes. <laughs> you need to see yourself as your own competition. Mm -hmm. Yes. And always make sure yeah. that you're a step ahead. That's exactly. it. So That's you, it. You yeah. Every year you have to challenge yourself yeah. to go beyond what you did the following the previous year and then push it forward. Yes, um, Albert, earlier on, you, you, you mentioned something about um, the Asian government helping businesses, you know, and I'm sure those have become the what we what what we know to be the asian tigers um don't you think we can replicate it here in ghana where by virtue of me starting i mean i know a lot of young a lot of young people are trying to start their businesses but as you said the environment can government step in to nurture and grow these businesses by so doing one they create employment and secondly they increase the tax net I think if, 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 if you say government steps in, I think it, it becomes, that's when you, 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 you mentioned something about party okay. um, uh, uh, politics. Yeah. Uh, it has to be an institution. Okay. This, this has to be a focused issue. It, it can't be changed every four years or every three years. <laughs> this, this has to be an, an independent institution, maybe getting some help from the government as well as other donors, if possible. Or even from the business community themselves, also yeah. also being part of it, to drive small businesses to scale, mm. like okay. yourself or yeah. like uh, I'm just to drive to scale and scaling means basically meaning assisting them to build capacity. Yeah, something like the Skill Development Fund FDF. Okay, exactly. SDF. There, there are programs there that they don't they don't i think it, every, there are s several different things going on at the it's, same it's, time it's fragmented exactly you see but just imagine uh, you 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 can now maybe now you're doing this as, as, as i'll give you an example you're doing a thousand shoes and they can help you build capacity to, to do five thousand shoes also build the demand for that that that's that, that you obviously when you build the capacity you have to build the build demand for that uh, yeah. for that as well the, the difference it makes, it means more people are coming in, being more employed. The government is going to get more tax revenue. Exactly. They, uh, you're going to pay a lot more people. People are going to have more money in their pockets. They're going to spend more in the economy. The economy is going to grow. So the, the effect is, it, it, it affects everybody. Yeah, multiplier effect. It affects everybody. It, it, the government gets money. The businesses get money. The employers get money in their pockets. Um, uh, to buy other things in the, in the economy so helping a, the, a business to scale is in the interest of everybody in the country mm -hmm. it's not just uh, you know something that we should just oh we just give it to one small organization or company to do maybe if i give you the opportunity to pitch in a minute <laughs> what do you need to scale up <laughs> that's right on the spot yes people are watching investors are watching Government is listening. Capacity. Capacity. When you say capacity, what do you mean? Human resource, mm -hmm. one. And um, infrastructure. Okay. Then we can look at the money. Human resource, aren't there enough people who can sew? Aren't there enough people who can, who can stitch bags? There are enough people, but are they doing it right? You know, for me, one of, I mean, my major challenges is, you know, um, there are a lot of people who say they can't sew, but can they stay straight? Do they have the right attitude to work? Training. Training. Making sure that the, the, the people that, you know, are institutions, are vocational institutions, are schools, the, the kind of people that they are training out, they're not just, you know, people who are just going to do things haphazardly. People who are going to be focused and know that you know, whatever we are producing, whether it's a product or whether it's a service, we are just not looking at the Ghanaian community, but then we are looking at international standards. Mm. Because at the end of the day, it's a global market. Exactly. Albert, do you have issues with um, human resource, attitude, and all that? Oh, that, I think every company, company does. <laughs> um, we, for us, scaling is, is, is not to even actually to do with the human resource side of things. Um, I think for us, scaling is to do with um, more of the technical side of okay. things. 
uh, in terms of uh, uh, machinery, automation, okay. uh, and probably land and space. Mm. And then I think as to getting the right people to come in, I think when we have that, we, we, we would definitely get the right some people to come in together. But then the team we have already now, uh, given the right infrastructure for them in terms of uh, the facilities that they use, if they have it, um, they would they would just sell. They 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 already because they know what they're doing. That's the that's the difference. They know what they're doing. Um, so it's just a matter of helping them to to uh, to move faster um, rather than on a, at a gradual pace. Okay. Because you're going to get there anyway. It's whether you want to get there in five years or you want to get there in ten years, years or you, yeah, years. exactly. Yes. That's uh, exactly. I I think that I associate with you. Yes, human resource is, is a problem, especially for us in the creative industry. Yeah. Yes, they are skilled, but the attitude, you know. I, I, I had a worker whom, when I paid on weekends, he would come back to work on Monday with a hangover, you know. And when you complain, they think that you, he thought that you, you don't have sympathy. He's sick, no, no, you're not sick, you are drunk, mm. you know. So, but with somebody like that, you, you, you obviously know that you can't work with yeah, them. Or, oh yeah, uh, so uh, later know, I, I have yeah. to listen. But then you, you, always, you always have some, the, 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 the thing is, um, and that's another reason why you have to think about scaling and getting the right uh, investment in there. You, 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 you retain the people you have and then you also attract uh, uh, much more good people. Because you, if, you, if you decide to be, make it just small, one or yourself, and then you won't, uh, grow. you won't grow. You won't grow. And you want everybody there to, to grow. Exactly. Yeah. You know, exactly. the people there to want to grow. To so you build them. Yeah. So you obviously have to think about that. Uh, and once you, uh, you think about all these things, you know that you have to scale. There's no two ways about it. You can't stay where you are. You really have to go. Unless, of course, you're comfortable and you, with the small you've got. And, and, but it doesn't make sense. That's what I'm, it doesn't make sense suffering. As I was talking to Mabel mm -hmm. earlier, um, she says she was working 12 hours a day. Um, uh, you know, seven days a week, I presume, or six days a week. Six. <laughs> six days a week, 12 hours a day. What is the point of suffering this 12 hours a day, 14 hours a day, all the, the, for the next what, five, six, seven years, uh, just for you to have a small business that's right. having to go? Well, well it's, it's no it, point. It's not yeah. worth all the time that you invest in. Uh, uh, then you might as well just make, get a small shop. Um, yeah, pretty simple. Yeah, then. <laughs> So and, and 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 if you don't scale, mm -hmm. you are not you are you are not doing justice to the people around you as well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because you you have to open up and then they can also flourish, uh, and then everybody can flourish and then it makes That's it makes true. yeah. Uh, mm. Horseman, at, at Horseman Shoes, yes, we've put in place some strategies that mm. uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll share with you. Mm -hmm. Initially, we had a lot of designs at any particular point in time when we went to our showroom. But we realized that yes, we fall short of machines and all that. But we we, we check and and see if we were even actually using the small that we have efficiently. Yeah. So we decide now we decided to focus on one design at a time. Yeah. Because when you do one design at a time, you are able to produce more in less hours than doing bits bits and pieces of yeah. most of the, a lot of designs. Yeah. It is something that my guys told me like two years ago. But I didn't see the, the reason it was. I, yeah. I didn't believe them. Yes. So I, I brought in uh, my new partners and uh, we, we went to Kumase, looked at our processes and realized that no, this is the new direction that we want to go. So yes, focusing. We, yes, focusing. That's the word, focus. Yeah. Focusing. So yeah. Sometimes you are tempted to you do tempted a lot. To that you can do everything. Oh, people bring ideas. Can you do belts? Yes, I can do belts for you. So <laughs> <laughs> give me two belts. You, know, you, you are distracted. Focus, focus, focus. Well, all too soon, our time is up. Thank you so much for staying tuned, and I hope you enjoyed this insightful conversation on entrepreneurship, Tony Senna's take on entrepreneurship. Thank you so much, Mabel Simpson of M. Sims, and our mentor, Albert Osei of Kukuken.